last time on Beat the Bush, I had this three kilowatt eco-worthy system set up with two of these Golden Mate 2.5 kilowatt hour each for a total of five kilowatt hour capacity. It was all on this wall over here on some plywood and there were some fire hazards right there. So now I've upgraded to this hardy board I got from Home Depot. It only costs about $15. The new one over here is also an eco-worthy. It's not sponsored. Five kilowatts capable of being put in parallel. Each one of these is a 12 volt battery, 200 amp hour. 2.5, 2.5, that's five. 10, 15, 20 kilowatt hour capacity. I thought I'd show you guys before I finish everything and it looks nice and neat. I am trying to make these cables to connect the batteries. And for each pair, they're the same brand and I need to connect negative to negative, positive to positive to put them in parallel. So I got eight of these. One of the latest batteries that I'm testing is this one. LI time, oh, it's heavy. 12.8 volt, 200 amp hour, 2,560 watt hours. On average, the house consumes about seven to eight kilowatt hour per day. And then there are losses when you convert from battery to AC. So maybe it might last me maybe two and a half days or so from this whole array. I actually have this weird fascination of going completely off grid even though you know the house is tied to the grid i just kind of don't want to be reliant on pg and e the bill is enormous so having energy independence it's kind of like a dream of mine that's why i like to do this crazy stuff and like put all this together myself now i have a lot of different batteries over here different brands and they also supplied me with this lithium time 48 volt battery balancer. This is very important because when I had other batteries, I used it over the period of a couple of months and I noticed the voltage between the batteries drifting a little bit. And part of the requirement when you have a battery array like this, they recommend you to take it all apart and recharge everything to full, balance it all yourself. No one has time for that, right? So that's why you get one of these battery balancers and connect them across all these batteries, just like how they do within each battery and it'll automatically balance them for you. They ended up being off by around 0.3 volts. That's quite a bit in terms of capacity. I measured the voltage across each of these batteries. 13.17, 13.17, no surprise there. These are brand new, got them from LI Time. 13.42, 13.36, slightly different because I used one of them to test an inverter and I use a bunch of energy from that one. So they're not exactly matched. That means I need to charge both of them all the way up to 100%. Connect minus to minus, positive to positive. Using two of these cables that I just created, I need to heat shrink them. 13.32, 13.33, these match fairly well. 13.32 again, 13.83. 13.8 is a little bit high. It might need a little bit more rest. 20 foot each color to uh, cut to size so that I can connect these together. Now it's okay to connect them in parallel, the manufacturer says, but most of them don't recommend you to connect different manufacturer batteries in series. So that's why I have to be super careful about this. I'm using a battery balancer to make sure that it's balanced. I know this one is 120 amps max. These other three, including the lithium time is 200 amps capable. They each have uh, 200 amp BMS in all of them. And with my five kilowatt inverter, 48 volt battery, it only needs about a hundred amps. So it definitely doesn't need the 200 amp capabilities of these batteries over here. And that's also why I'm using two gauge cable over here. This is enough for a hundred amps. So let me just show you guys one crimp of this cable, measuring it to size, cut it, strip it, crimp it. Much cheaper than if you were to buy sections of these yourself, if you have to create a lot of them. But of course you gotta buy this crimper and also a wire cutter. I also got this Class T fuse, 200 amp capable for this 100 amp system. The reason for a Class T fuse is if you have a sudden very, very large surge in current, it might melt some of the breakers. Even if it's up to like 200,000 amps, it will break and it will disconnect 
your battery from the rest of the system and not cause thing to go on fire. So this would go between the inverter and the battery to work as a disconnect. Marking this box at 17 inches and this allows me to put it on a hard surface rather than a tape measure. Hold it with my finger there. Ugh. These will be the series connections and I actually don't have a stripper but I can do it quite well with just a cutter. Lightly push in, go all the way around. I don't think I got any of the strands cut off, so that's good. I have a set of these two gauge crimp. It comes with heat shrink. So it says two gauge, five sixteenths inch diameter hole. Here's one of those M8 screws. See, fits exactly. Put that right in there. I think I'm a little bit short here, so let me try again, like a sixteenth of an inch further. Oh, I got a few strands loose there. That's okay. Making sure it goes all the way because we're gonna crimp two spots, one here and one here. Once you got it all in there, I'm gonna kind of tighten it a little bit, but not crimp it yet. Make sure to push this cable all the way in and also twist it in the right orientation and I'm gonna crimp it down. I'm pushing against the floor here. Okay. Well, once you got the first crimp very tight, and then I'll do the second crimp right next to it. This one's easy. Just go like that. Just like that. We're done with one side. Let's put on the heat shrink. There's an incredible amount of cables if you want to connect eight batteries together. Two to parallel each battery. So you got eight right there. Connect one set in series. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then from the positive terminal, you need two cables running to this board over here. Negative terminal, you need two cables running to this board over here. And then one more cable to go from this bus bar to the negative terminal. For the positive terminal, it needs to go to this class T fuse. And then from the class C fuse, it goes to this circuit breaker. I think that's around 20 cables. You'll need a lot of these little cable lugs, like 40 of them. This is a 12 volt lithium iron phosphate charger. It uses 14.6 volt to charge it and it varies its current. It can go up to 50 amps. The best way to use these clamps is to clamp them on the big part of the battery terminal. This gives it the most pressure. Therefore, it gives the best contact. Same goes with the positive terminal and we can turn it up all the way to 40 amps here and we'll let that charge for a while. 13.33, 13.32, pull these out. Connect the first terminal, connect the second one here. When you do this, be careful not to touch the wrench to either of those negative terminals. You're gonna be swinging it like this, right? So it might go all the way over there. So be careful, cover that up. We'll use another one of these negative guys. What's gonna happen if I touch this to that? Not much. That's because the voltage difference between here and here is very little. If you are nervous about connecting them, you can always check the voltage difference, 0 0.004. So nothing should happen. So it's not gonna spark at all if you connect them, see? This one is 13.33 by itself. This one is 13.32. So it's gonna flow current from here into this one and charge this one up until they're completely, completely equal. We put this back in there. Now I got these covers here, just in case when I push them in, it doesn't touch these metal racks and short out. We're gonna try a load test first. 200 amps from this battery is 2.5 kilowatts. I have a 3000 watt inverter there, so that should work. If you connect them directly, there's gonna be a huge inrush current and a little spark. So to avoid that, I have a 2.2 ohm high power resistor. Just put that on. Okay, that's all it takes. And then we can connect it safely now without sparking. This is a variable transformer. I can put in 120 volts. Out comes AC zero to 120 volts as you turn this knob over here. It's sort of like a DIY thing, but I can control precisely how much wattage comes out of here. 1500 watt heater, 1000 watt heater, and another 400. Depending on the temperature of the coils, Sometimes they spike up initially, so I want to adjust it so that it doesn't go over too much. So let's turn on this one. We're getting 90 amps, 1.12 kilowatts. On this little one, we should add another 400 watts. Now we get 1.8 kilowatts. That's nice and all, but let's turn on this guy to kick it up to 
200 amps continuous, 152 amps, 200 amps. Oh, see, it kind of went up a little bit. Let me cut that back down a little so it's 200 amps. It's at 203 amps. Let's run it for a few minutes first. A heater here, a heater here, and heater here. And we can also check out the cables and see if they're getting too hot. 85 degrees. It's okay for now for short durations. This little short black cable is getting a little too hot, 130 degrees Fahrenheit. So definitely don't want to run this for too long. I probably should stop it, but the battery can handle 203 amps. I think let me touch this. Yeah, it's a little soft there. Let's do a capacity test discharge at around 900 watts. Turn this one on. This is the amp hour reading and it's ticking up. Draining it completely, I got 209 amp hours. So the capacity checks out. After it stopped, I was able to start it again and get another three amp hours. I have very unbalanced batteries here. On the top one, they equalize to 13.78. On the second tier is 13.38, a difference of 0.4 volts. That's a lot. It's been 24 hours and the batteries are within 0.024 volts of each other. Each pair of batteries actually matches in voltage to the 1000s because they have these really, really low impedance cables connecting them. But you see, it's not perfect. It's not like it's gonna get it to within one 1000th of a volt. It seems like that's the limit. When I balanced it, these batteries are not actually connected together at all. They're only connected in parallel for now because I wanted to see how well the battery balancer works. This is quite exciting to have all eight batteries hooked up. 20,000 kilowatt hour here. Just one last check to check the polarity is correct. 53.44 volts and the breaker's off. I got my class T fuse here and I have the bus bars, two wires of equal length going to each negative terminal of each bank. I call this bank one and that's bank two and they are all connected in parallel with also equal length wires. There's a battery balancer for these four sets over here. The fact that these are the same manufacturer, I can tie them together and they'll balance each other out. And so because these are different manufacturers, I put the battery balancer so to make sure they're equal all the time. Double check, the plus battery is this red line on the left. Black is there. This is actually in my electronics room. It's not right next to the main breaker. So I'm only gonna charge it up to 15 amps with the AC over here. I don't plan to use that much from the grid and the solar panels comes in over here. I haven't hooked it up yet and I still have to work on that. I have six panels set up on the floor with racks and actually this solar inverter requires me to have at least seven solar panels. So I have two more that I already bought and you gotta put those in series. It's a little bit tricky on how many panels these things need. There's a maximum voltage that the inverter can take and there is a minimum voltage that it requires for the MPPT to work. This one is 120 volts. The working voltage of the solar panels is actually 17.1 for the ones I have. So 120 divided by 17.1 is 7.01. If you're a little bit under, it might work, but you know, I just wanted to have even numbers. So I have eight solar panels. The previous one I had over here, the MPPT goes from 30 volts to 85 volts DC. So that means you need at least two solar panels in series in order to make this one work. Going from two solar panels to requiring eight, it's quite a big deal. Let me show you guys what it looks like in my yard. So let's turn it on. There's a breaker over here. Also the on switch. Come on. No, nothing. Oh, there we go. Oh my gosh, it's alive. 120 volts coming out. Battery bank voltage, 53.5. 120 volt is active. Let's turn on the heater and see if that works. On. <laughs> yeah, it works. Does it tell me the wattage? 1.5 kilowatt right now 1.6 and it can do up to 5 kilowatt i'll do a low test on it a little bit later after i set everything correctly in this inverter there's a lot of settings to do but for now we can turn that back off and i want to plug in the ac now it actually wants to charge it so i'm going to unplug it for now that's exciting isn't it this battery array 20 kilowatt hours 
it's a little bit more than a Tesla Powerwall. Of course, it doesn't have liquid cooling and all that, but it does have the battery balancer in there. Each of these lead time batteries having 200 amp hours. It also have a 200 amp BMS. It absolutely does not need that for this particular inverter. 100 or so amps from this 48 volts will supply five kilowatt already. That means each one of these only need to supply 50 amps. But if I upgrade the entire array, to 200 amp BMS capable and also probably need to upgrade these wires. It can do 400 amps on 48 volts, which means it's 20 kilowatt capable if you have big enough wires. Check out Lead Times battery if you guys are interested. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to give me a like and subscribe for more. <music>